Okay, so today we're on a 2007 Toyota Sequoia, and uh, we're going to check the uh, secondary air injection system to help us determine uh, if there's any issues with the system. Now, the first thing you want to do, we're going to go into engine and ECT. Uh, of course, there's a little liability statement here. This this ECU controls the fuel injection and ignition timing, not control uh, engine idle speed, self-diagnosis function, and the backup function in extraordinary circumstances, uh, etc. In addition, it controls the automatic transmission. Okay. Uh, first thing you want to do before you start this test is make sure you check your trouble codes. Okay, so we don't have any trouble codes set right now. If you did, uh, you want to notate what codes you have or clear them. So we're going to hit escape to that. We're going to go to special functions. And there's an option here that says secondary air injection check. This system is going to run through the entire check and help determine if there's a, a failure in the system. Use this function to identify the component or components that may cause a malfunction relating to air injection system or validate the repair of an air injection system. So we're going to hit OK to that. If you hear the wind blowing in the background, it is a very windy day today. Okay. Uh, the active test required to perform this check cannot run if the test status is not ready. And it generally will tell you if the test status is ready or not. Now there's an automatic mode and a manual mode. I normally just use automatic mode, but I'll also show you the manual mode and the options that you got there. So we're just going to hit next. Okay, air injection uh, check automatic. Confirm the following conditions. Ignition is on. Vehicle is stopped. Engine is not running. Battery voltage is more than 8 volts. Uh, DTC, which is related to throttle, airflow, and misfire, is not detected. Of course, we didn't have any uh, diagnostic trouble code, so we're good there. Second air system status of data list is off. So we're going to hit next to that. Air injection check automatic. Initiating the test. Wait five seconds. Air injection automatic. Start engine. Press next. Engine started. I'm going to hit next. Okay, the automatic air injection system cannot be aborted once the test begins. This test can take one to two minutes to complete. Press next to begin the check. I'm going to hit next. Okay, the idle just increased. I heard the air pump come on. Okay, performing automatic air inje injection check. This test can take one to two minutes to complete. Okay, the idle just came down. I heard the pump. I think I heard the pump shut off. Okay, the system, uh, the air injection check is complete. Press escape to view pending trouble codes. So now once you escape out of that, we're going to go over here and we're going to check our trouble codes. Okay, there's still no codes detected. That means the test passed. Now if, so basically what this system just did is initiated a full air, in, uh, air injection system uh, procedure or it, it ran through the entire procedure just as it would if the car was first started in the morning which is generally when the air injection system works. The air injection system on these Toyotas work during a cold soak condition meaning that the uh, both both temperature, the, the intake air temp and the engine temp have to be I think it's within about 13 degrees of one another uh, for instance, after it's set overnight, uh, usually they recommend letting it sit eight hours or more for a cold soak condition. Then when you start the vehicle up, the air injection pump will introduce fresh air into the intake to help 
for one, that O2, the uh, O2 sensors heat up faster and to help reduce the emissions coming out of the exhaust. It only runs for about a minute or two. Maybe, I think it's 90 seconds or something like that. And then it shuts off and it doesn't work for the remainder of the engine cycle or even whenever the engine's warm. So if you go to the store, you turn the engine off, go to your grocery shopping, you come out, you start the vehicle, the air injection system is not going to work. The engine's warm, air pump's not going to come on at any time during the drive cycle. It has to be a cold soak condition. So what the scan tool does is even though the engine may be warmed up, you can initiate that, uh, that test or that procedure of the air, air injection system so that you can see if it would set a trouble code in the real world. Meaning after you started it up in the morning, it was cold soaked. If there was a, a solenoid or a valve or something, the air pump possibly not working, and you would end up getting a code. In other words, you don't have to wait for a cold soak to test your solenoids and all that. You can actually use this machine to initiate the te the, uh, the procedure at any time you know you need to to help you troubleshoot the problem. Now let's go ahead and escape out of this and uh, we're going to go back into special functions and we're going to do this test again but we're going to go I'll, I'll run down and show you the difference between the automatic and the manual. And let me go ahead and shut the engine off. Okay, so there's automatic mode. If you was to go to manual mode, go to next. Same deal here. Engine uh, or ignition is on. Vehicle stop. Engine is not running. Battery voltage more than eight volts. Uh, any DTCs relating to those systems that could affect the operation of the, the uh, air injection, obviously you can't have any any issues. Uh, second air system status of data list is off. We're going to go to next. Wait the five seconds. It's initiating the test. Okay, uh, start the engine. Then we're going to hit next. Okay, we're going to hit next to that. That's just to prevent system damage, each active test can only be performed for five seconds. There will be a 30 second timer in between active tests. Do not operate any active tests more than four times in a row. Okay, so what you'd have, for instance, if I selected this box here and hit next, the air pump would be off. Um, not sure what the EASV is. That's, that is a valve, but I'm not sure what EAS stands for. There's a valve underneath the intake uh, that this represents. That's going to be closed. The air injection solenoid valve 1 will be closed. The air injection solenoid valve 2 will be closed. Then if I want to initiate the air pump being on and all the valves open, I would select that box. I'd hit next. If I wanted the, the air pump on only and all the valves closed, I'd want that box. So you can go down and you, you can whatever configuration you want the system to be in, you just select it and you hit next and that's what you're going to get. So that's what the manual mode does. The automatic mode is what I always use. The automatic mode goes through the whole system automatically. It does all these automatically, then it completes it and then you're done. The automatic mode is the way to go because it's just a lot quicker and all that. Now maybe if you wanted to check a particular valve and you, you, you had your multimeter out there and you wanted to either actuate the valve open or close then you could you, you could do this um, what would be nice is if you could open like this right here this this one you, of course that's going to kick the air pump on also but that's going to open all your valves you know, you can be out there and actually verify that the that the solenoid valves. Uh, and if you don't know what the valves are, the two VSB one and two valves are these right here. You got two valves back behind the intake. 
uh, and you got a solenoid that controls them. These are the vacuum lines that run down to the valves, and then these two solenoids control those valves. But, anyway, the whole point of this video was just to show the actual test that the Autel is able to do on the uh, air injection system. Anyway, I'm going to back out of this. Um, that's actually all I've got. Then, you know, of course, the number one thing after you get done with the test is make sure that you don't have any trouble codes. Uh, if you do have a trouble code after this test is ran, that's the circuit or that's the, the that's what you need to focus on. So let's say you had one of these solenoids that was that was bad in a, a wiring problem. You would have a code after this runs the test, you would have a code related to that particular item. For instance, if you had a uh, air injection solenoid valve one that was open after the automatic test went through and then you go back to check your trouble codes you're going to have a code relating to that valve. Uh, if after the system completes the test and you go back and you check for trouble codes and there are none you don't have a problem at least bad enough to set a, to set a fault. You may still have an intermittent problem but you don't have a problem that's obviously giving you, you know, a, a issue every single time that the vehicles ran. And remember, the air injection system only runs after it's been sitting long enough to cool completely off, and you first start it up. After that, after the engine's warm, the air injection system doesn't run. Anyway, I'm done. You guys take care. Hopefully, you got something out of that and out of the scan tool. Uh, until the next time, you guys take care.